Thank you so much. Well, today we are blessed to have with us six wonderful mothers. I said we are blessed today to have six wonderful mothers. Amen. Amen. And we have invited these ladies to the stage at this time. And they're going to, we're going to use this hour, this point of our worship where we would normally speak to you myself. I thought we'd do something different this year rather than me speaking to you out of the scriptures and telling you about something about motherhood or sometimes I was talk to you, express uh, the life of certain persons uh, like Ruth and Esther and others in the Bible who have served for us as examples. I thought today we would do something different rather than me preach to you that we would let the mothers come and it would be from one heart of a mother to the heart of another. And so we have with us today on stage uh, Sister Donna Smith Amen. Sister Connie Payne. Sister Kimberly Stallworth. Sister Elizabeth Frazier. My own mother, Sister Nancy Collins. And then my wife will wrap everything up, Yvonne Coleman. Come on, let's give them all a hand, will you please? I gave these ladies an assignment and the assignment so that you can keep up with what is going on. I asked them to center their thoughts around three questions. And their questions are, and they're going to come to you in this same order with one, how has God influenced your life as a mother? The second thing they're going to address is what is the greatest experience you've had as a mother? And then the third thing will be, what advice would you give to a mother who's just starting out? Let's receive our mothers this morning. Amen. Sister Donna Smith. Good morning. Let's praise God. Let's give our Lord and Savior some praise this morning for all the mothers. And thank God for all the mothers this morning. You know, I've found throughout the years that being a wife, a mother, and a grandmother, it can be hard sometimes. And being a working wife, mother, and grandmother can be even harder. But I found through constant prayer that God enables me to make each day. I'm able to get up in the morning, get prepared for work, get prepared to see my family off to their jobs, my granddaughter off to school. But throughout the years, it's been hard. It's been a struggle sometimes. But the Lord never told us it was going to be easy. So I just keep, you know, putting my life in his hands. You know, he's blessed me with three wonderful kids four grandkids. I mean, I stay in constant prayer for my son and his wife and his family. I want them to be able to serve God and God to be first in their lives. But I know it's their choice. They have to make the choice to serve them. So I just keep, keep in prayer for them that they be the best parents they can be with God leading them. I have a wonderful daughter, April. She has, she's a wife and a mother. And she's dealing with an illness. But she's not focused on that illness. She's focusing on God and what he wants her to do. So he enables her to get up each morning and fight through her struggle, her pain, and take care of herself and her family. And I thank God for that. But I know it's through a lot of prayer. I have a daughter, Stacy, my baby girl. And she's raising a child at this time. But I know she couldn't do it without God. Because God took care of her from birth. He's been there. And it's only because of prayer. I want to thank God for what he's done for my family throughout the years. Because he's been a great God. And he has influenced my life through prayer. And I thank him for that. I'm able to go to him. I'm able to go to my prayer closet, get on my knees, and thank him for each day. 
there's no better place to be than able to have that relationship with God and talk to him and knows he will answer because I know he has I just have to keep trusting and believing in him Stacy well everyone knows that she's a teenage mother she was a teenage mother and I learned to have a great experience through that. I thought it was tragic at the time, because being a teenager, you know, we were raised, you marry first, then have a child. And I didn't think it could happen, but we know things can happen in life, and we have to accept the situations. But I learned forgiveness through her situation. I learned it from these women of God here. These women who love God so much that he leads them. That when it happened, that some of the ladies took uh, Stacy down to the altar here and asked for prayer over her and her child. And Pastor Coleman had other women come down and lay hands on her. And she rededicated her life to God and dedicated her child to God. That's how much these women in this church love the Lord. And he loves, and they love the people of God. Some of the ladies came to me and talked to me and, and talked to me because they saw, saw the anger I had towards Stacy at that time. Because I didn't think it could happen here under the word that we get, it's getting preached and taught here every week. You know the pastor we have, it was, more, it was even more powerful then than now the word that's being taught. So I didn't think it could happen. Sister Coleman and uh, Pastor Coleman had a uh, counseling session with the kids. It's called what is it? Let, Let's Be Real. It was wonderful. And it, Stacy was a part of the, the choir. And she was in other activities after school. But, you know, things happen. Kids can make mistakes. But they could turn those around by dedicating their lives to God. And I thank God for putting these women in my life to teach me how to get, forget about that situation and forgive and forget and just keep moving, keep going forward with God. It's no better friendship than Christian friends. They're always there for you. It, it, it tells us in the word in Galatians 6 and 1, Brother, if a man be overtaken with a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering by itself, lest ye be tempted. And 6 2 says, Bear one another's burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. I really learned what those scriptures mean through these women here who know how to talk to you in gentleness and love. And let you know that, you know, we all make bad choices sometimes. But we get to love that person and love them through their trials, their burdens. Because we, we love one another. God has placed love inside us, of us. So any situation that we may think is bad, God can turn that whole situation around and make it for the good. Because my granddaughter Kendra is a blessing to my life. She's been with us since birth through women's ministry, the retreats. Sister Chrissy, is Sister Chrissy here? <laughs> Do you remember back in a retreat years ago? Stacy, 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 get up and change that baby. <laughs> I want to thank all the women here for all the help they have given me through the years with that child. And she is a blessing. So I tell all the mothers and the young mothers, stay in prayer. See what God can do if you continue to serve him in this house. This church is a blessing to all families. Not just the women, but the men. There are so many ministries that you can be a part of that you can learn to serve God with all of your heart. Just surrender to him and there's going to be a place for you. I found through these women that they are some powerful, strong mothers, wives, grandmothers, even the single women. They are a blessing to the rest of us. And just continue to serve God. Put him first. Listen to this word in this house. We have a pastor, a shepherd that's there for us. 
And you see the, the word that's getting taught here each week. It's powerful. And you know, things may happen in life, but you know you have a great God to go to. So I say, just be a praying mother. Stay in prayer and see what God can do for you. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Unlike Donna, I'm going to have to pull out my glasses and my paper. Because <laughs> I don't remember nothing and I can't see nothing. <laughs> but anyway, bless the Lord anyway. Uh, many, many years ago when I was a young girl, I was baptized. Not because I wanted Jesus in my heart, but because everybody else was doing it. I learned things about Jesus, but I really didn't know him. My life was my life. I was pregnant at the age of 17. And at 18, I was married and had two children. At the age of 27, I had five children. I knew nothing about abstinence, fornication, adultery. I didn't know none of that. I married an ungodly man. And as a result of that, that put me on a course of relationships with ungodly men. The only thing I could tell my children about God is that God was good. That's just about all I could tell them about God. I couldn't tell them that he was a saving God, a forgiving God, and that he wanted to love them unconditionally. I couldn't tell my children that. In 1986, I became probably one of the youngest grannies ever. And I thank God for my granddaughter, Danielle. I went to church when I wanted to. But the more I went, the more I wanted to go. And the more I studied the Word of God, the more I wanted to know. God influenced my, my life as a mother by giving me a godly mother. She wasn't always righteous, but she always did the right thing. In 1989, my mother gave me this Bible on my 40th birthday. And in the front of the Bible, she wrote, oh, excuse me, and just let me find it. Where she done in script? <clears throat> I should have had that there. Okay. Presented to Connie Ray Payne by Ray Johnson, Mama. Dear Connie, open this book often, read it, reflect on its teachings, and answer its call. That was so profound, and I didn't even know it at the time. He influenced my life as a mother by putting me in the path of godly people, godly women, and I thank him for that. It's been a real blessing to be able to celebrate God with my sister. We're not on that level anymore, sister, sister level anymore. It's godly women, and I'm grateful for that. He influenced my life by me giving me the greatest gift of all, and you know that was his son, Jesus Christ. 
In 1989, I met an evangelist through a co-worker. I don't even remember his name. But I worked with this guy, and my mom was going through a very difficult time because she had lost two grandchildren. And she just cried and cried and cried. And I asked him if he would just come and talk to her. Well, he had a friend that was an evangelist, and he brought the friend with him. He talked and he read scripture, and then he said he was going to pray for her. But before he prayed, he asked me if I had any special request or was there anything that I needed God to do for me. Well, you know, yeah. I thought for a moment and I said, yeah. He said, what's that? I said, I need a financial blessing. He asked me if I tithe. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> he said, so he showed me the scripture in Malachi 3, 8 and 10 to bring all the tithes into the storehouse. He talked to me about tithing. And he said, that's where your blessings come from. I did. I start tithing. And that, that was the start of my real walk with the Lord. I learned that giving was the key to a healthy relationship with God. Not only in my tithing, but in my time and in my talent. Now, I couldn't sing, but every now and then I could dance a jig. <laughs> um, what I learned throughout all of this, and it was so much more with the difference in my life unsaved and saved was that now I had purpose and I knew it. Now I get it. He had a purpose for my life. Romans 8 and 28 said, all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord, those who are called according to his purpose. He had a purpose for my life. And I began to walk in that purpose. I not only read the scriptures, but I relied upon the, the scriptures for my life. I've learned to never give up, young ladies. Never give in to the enemy. Keep praying. Keep believing. Keep giving. Not just your money, but your time and your talent. We all have some kind of talent. And one of my greatest experiences... <laughs> Sometimes we're ashamed to tell about our experiences. But I believe in my heart that experiences from other people help in raising up the younger people. It helps in making us more powerful and help us to understand the right thing to do. This greatest experience happened in the church. It was uh, Minister McDermott was over the women's ministry. And it was early in our ministry, and she used to do assignments. So this particular time, she did the Ten Commandments. So she said she had prayed about it, and what assignment to give to who, and God had put these people on her heart. So she was passing out the assignments, you know, you've got thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. But when she got to me, she said thou shalt not commit adultery. <laughs> I'm like, what she getting at to me for? <laughs> so I was kind of uneasy about it at first. You know, and she talked to me. She said, just do it, sister. So I, I accepted it. <laughs> and uh, I began to read and pray and research. And it became very clear to me why I was chosen. And it was because, not because she knew it, but because God knew that I had lived that. And I was better able to tell it. And, it, and I was grateful for that. You know, sometimes we get mad about stuff, but it's for our good. Uh, I'm about to wrap it up. <laughs> it's about 10 minutes gone. <laughs> Like I said, nobody really wants other people to know their secrets. But confession is good, and it brings us to repentance. 
In 1998, I promised God that there would be no more relationships except they be godly relationships. No more. Once I studied that adultery, I was done with that. Once I really knew, I was done with that. And I went to a T.D. Jakes uh, concert one time, whatever that thing was, and this girl that rode the bus with me, she made a profound statement to me that day. She said, if it can't be done in heaven, it can't be done here. Well, I pondered that. And that always came back to my mind. And I said, if it can't be done in heaven, it can't be done here. It is, it is then when the Spirit of God let me know how much truth was in that Word of God. I'm not perfect, but I do strive. And I promised God, if it can't be done in heaven, it can't be done here. It can't be done in my body. It can't be done in my mind. It can't be done in my heart. And it can't be done in my spirit. For the first time in my life, I was truly set free from something that had bound me for so long. What I thought was the best years of my life, what I didn't know was the best was yet to come. And my advice to you young mothers and to you older mothers, because I was an older mother when I really come to know God, is seek the Lord while you're young. Introduce and involve him in the lives of your children. Be real with God. Be honest. Keep yourself pure. He knows you. And he loves you. And always know the difference between raising and rearing your children. Raising is saying to it that, seeing to it that they have the necessities of life. But rearing your children is, is seeing to it that they not only have the necessities of life, but that they have the promises of heaven. So, for, and from a well, well seasoned Christian woman, my mother, I repeat these words and I pray that you hear them. Open the book often, read it, reflect on its teachings, answer its call. Then you, like your foremothers, become influential in the lives of other people. God bless you and I pray that your life is already saved and you walk in your salvation. Good morning, church. And I would like to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Um, what I would like to share with you today about my influences with um, the Lord in my life as a mother is that it's been wonderful. I've learned to trust in God, to believe in Him, and just try to worship with Him as much as possible. Um, I, I, too, got pregnant at an early age. I was 17. I was pregnant with Aisha. After her birth, they told me that she wouldn't be able to walk. And um, because she had some complications to her feet, they said that she wasn't able to fully develop. And they said she wouldn't be able to walk without wearing braces. And uh, 10 months later, my baby was walking without the help of anybody. And I thank God so much for that. Three years after that, pregnant again with my daughter, Tisha, and that was a healthy pregnancy. Uh, Fourteen years after that, pregnant again with Jordan. And um, with Jordan, as I was delivering him, the uh, doctor screamed out, and it scared the mess out of me. It was such a loud, a loud scream. She was like, oh, oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe it. And I'm like, what, what's wrong? I'm trying to raise up and see what's going on. And she said, he has a head full of hair. And I'm like, oh God, because I couldn't take anything else. Two or three seconds after that, she screamed again. And I was like, what is wrong? Everybody was gathering around. What is wrong? 
She said, you have a miracle son. This is a miracle baby. And I was like, what are you talking about? She says, his umbilical cord is tied, tied in a knot. And she's never delivered a child like that before. Usually it's a stillborn or you might miscarry early on. And she just was curious. She didn't know how he survived. It was like a golf ball size knot and it was pretty tight. And so I'm, I'm so thankful that God was in my life. At this point in my life, I had changed my life. I married my husband. We was just doing the best we could to you know, raise our kids. I haven't always been able to make it to church due to a demanding work schedule, but I've always made sure that they came to church some kind of way with somebody. <laughs> and uh, I just thank God for Jordan, Aisha, all of my kids. Three years after that, Jalen was born. And we had another incidence with Jalen. Before he was born, during my pregnancy, when I found out that I was pregnant with him, had my first ultrasound, um, the doctors told me they would advise me to abort that pregnancy because I had fibroid tumors in my uterus. And I was like, abort it? I was like, but I'm pregnant. I just couldn't imagine, you know, doing that and, and going through that. I can't abort my child. I was like, you know, no, I'm not gonna do it. It's like, what are my options? They told me, go ahead on and have the baby, but you could die and the baby could die. It's a high risk. You know, more than likely, it's gonna be some type of complication. So, you know, I went home and I, I prayed about it. I believe I called everybody in the family and told them what they said and everybody was like, that's nothing you can do. God gave you this and you're gonna, you know, stick with it. You're gonna let him be born. And um, so I did. But the thing about him is that the doctors was like really, 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 really pushing me to have an abortion with this child. And so I asked one doctor, I was like, well, what is it that I can do? Is it anything? They was like, no, we cannot treat you. It's too high of a risk. We can't uh, give you medication. And this one midwife said, um, you know, if you eat blueberries, they have strength the tumors. I was like, blueberries? And she was like, yes. I went out. And I bought bags and bags and bags of frozen blueberries. I'm telling you, <laughs> my diet was blueberries. Every day, that's mostly all I ate was blueberries. And you know what? It really worked. And in my mind, I'm like, I don't know if she really knew what she was talking about or if this is God, you know? And so um, I'm just so thankful for my kids. I just love them so dearly. And I talk to them every day about God. And I influenced that in their lives. And it's just amazing because I can see what I put into them. I can see how it comes out. And I had that same influence when I was a young girl with Dinky, with um, my great aunt who raised me, every female Christian woman in my life. And um, let's see. Um, so my advice to young mothers would be to never give up. Um, just always be there for your kids, listen to them, talk to them, take time out with them, and to um, just do your best to raise your kids and, and get them in church. They must be in church. And you know, the most ironic thing about this is that my kids actually brought me back into the church. <laughs> and um, just don't ever give up because like I said, I was 17 years old with my first um, pregnancy. I was uh, dropped out of school, so I was uneducated. I was unemployed. I did not know what I was gonna do. Only thing I knew is that I was gonna raise this baby, have this baby and not put this off on anybody else in my family. And also I was, and I was determined that I, I wasn't gonna uh, depend on the government. And so I just ended up getting little part-time jobs and then uh, was blessed with a full-time position at the Tennessee, which I worked there for 26 years. And after that, I was blessed with being able to leave the Tennessee and open up my own business. And I know without God and prayer, I, this couldn't have happened. I mean, really, I shouldn't be even standing here right now. 
God has really blessed me and turned my life around. And I'm thankful to it. And I thank all of you for welcoming me to the church with open arms. And it makes me feel so good. And especially you, Pastor Coleman, for inviting me to be a part of this. And you know, I haven't officially joined the church yet. But guess what? Today I will. <laughs> Today I will. I, I have to because my family is here. And um, another thing that I can say to uh, young mothers is just to... Um, Learn something. Just go out there and just learn something. And whatever it is, teach it to others. You know, like, don't be selfish with your knowledge. Spread it on. Just do the best that you can and trust in God and nobody else. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. <clears throat> How has God influenced my life as a mother? Well, first of all, I have heard all these ladies looking at my paper. They, they peeped before I came up here. I know they did. <laughs> um, yeah, same, same. we're on the same page. First of all, uh, God influenced me as a mother by saving my soul and letting me believe and accept him, even as a young child at the age of eight. I felt his love as a child. My aunt and my family, you know how to, in the old days, hey, my family's here. In the old days, um, the families, I don't know about y'all family, but the family that I knew of, everybody drank. Not the children, but everybody drank. There was always a weekend party, and the kids came in, it was the entertainment, did the dance, and James Brown, you know, he was cool. And then the kids left, and the party went on. But my aunt, always sent me to church. Sorry. <clears throat> My aunt almost always sent me to church. Let me go to church. And I came home one day at eight years old, and I had accepted Christ and was baptized. And she said, uh, you shouldn't have done that without asking me. But oh, I thank God that I did because I found Christ's love at that time. I felt his love as a child, and I wanted to share that same love <clears throat> excuse me, with others, and especially little ones. I know it's our choice, but I thank God for that gift. Proverbs 22 and 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he gets old, he won't depart. It doesn't mean he won't make a mistake. It doesn't mean they won't choose and go down the wrong road. But that means if you put it in them, they'll remember. They know on Sunday morning they should be at church, whether they go or not. They know to pray when things get hard and things get bad. They know that they should do the right thing even when they make a mistake. So to be a real mother, you have to have love. As Pastor Coleman says, that's the main thing. Then, another way God influenced me as a mother, he encouraged me to pray. Most of us have said this one prayer. I know y'all think I'm going to say, Our Father, which art in heaven. But that's not the one. Mm -mm. It's the one where you bow your head. You put your full head in your hand, and you say, oh, Lord, help me. I'm about to kill him. I'm about to kill him. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. I know y'all done prayed that prayer before. But instead, pray that God will protect your child from the evil one in their spiritual lives, in their emotional lives, and in their physical life. John 17 and 15 says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. And then God so also, also excuse me, influenced me as a mother by teaching me, and especially through our pastor, to study his word. Because the word gives us power. The word of God gives peace. When I thought I was going to lose my mind, the peace that passes surpasses understanding was there because I had a God that I could go to because of his word, because of being in his word and learning from his word. One of the greatest experiences I ever had as a mother is in seeing God's saving power, seeing how God has saved us. 
each person, each little person that accepted Christ. My sister today, who has given her life, rededicating her life to join the church. I have seen God work miracles over and over and over again. I tell you the story about a little boy when he was born. Same story as yours. The baby was coming out and the doctor was like, don't push, mother, don't push. The baby had the umbilical cord wrapped around his neck. That same baby, when he was 18 months old, was playing in the swing with his sister. Sister, big girl, she was on the low swing. He's the little one, he's on the high swing. Put his head in the swing, and the swing had twisted around. The mother was inside the house, attending to her newborn, and she heard a voice, and it said, look outside. And when she looked, she only saw the swing. She didn't see the child, but the spirit said, something to her heart, and she yelled, oh my God, you know, that's a prayer, because he know what, what's in your heart, and he knows what's coming next. And the grandmother and the grandfather, old and can't hardly walk, had ran around the house to beat the mother almost to the swing. The child had turned blue, and the child was purple, and the mother shook the child. She didn't know what to do, but she called on the name of Jesus. And Today, that child is okay. Well, the Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And even though Satan was on his job, he tried to take your Jordan. He tries to take all of our children. But God got a plan and a purpose for our children. So that same child, the devil was on his job. In birth, he tried to steal him with the biblical order. When he was 18 months old, he tried to kill him, twisting that swing up around him. But right now, he can't destroy him because he's saved by the blood, yeah. the blood of Jesus. And that little boy is your own brother Cody. I know. <laughs> God has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us. And even to be a mother is such a wonderful gift. To even to be a mother in this church. Because I get to be a mother to yours and get to love on them and pray for them too. And I thank God for that. Advice to young mothers and to all mothers is give your child back to God. Sister Sarah knows something about that. All of us probably know something about that. When you can't handle it, don't even try. Give them back to God. He gave them to you. Give them back to God. But give them back to God with love in your heart. Pray for your children. You've heard that today. Bring your child to God. If you don't feel like going to church, you should be here. But call your sister, your auntie. Call somebody. Don't let them stay at Riri's and Ray Ray's and TT's house on the weekend. If you do, let him stay Friday and you go pick him up Saturday night so he's here and awake and getting the word of God on Sunday. Amen. Ask God to show you how to parent that precious gift that he's given you. Ask God to help you to be the best mother you can be. And I will. The women of the Christ Church Women's Ministry, the pastor and this whole church will be praying with you. We will pray with you that the Holy Spirit will teach you that God's wisdom will guide you and Christ's love will move you. But remember the main thing and the best way to love your child is to give him or her back to God. Ask God to make our children servants after God's own heart. And lastly, Sister Payne was all in my paper. Give God your tithe. I'm a witness. No money and I don't lack nothing. God is good. Give God your time. Give God your talent and give God your time. And you will be the best mother and the best woman you'll ever be. Thank you. How God has influenced my life as a mother. Before I was saved, God influenced my life through my children. As we were coming up, we were a poor family. 
And uh, you've already heard some of the stories from the pool pit. <laughs> but anyway, I always wanted my children to have the best. So I sent them to church. They started as very young lads, as some of these that I see around here. I mean, small children. They went, but I didn't. But I was faithful. They were ready on Saturday night, and on Sunday morning, somebody from Mount Sinai I picked them up, and they were going to church. And I will never forget one Sunday, when they come home, we were out on the sidewalk, and I cannot remember which child was either Bruce or Mark. And he said, Mama, you know what? You always send us to church, but you never go with us. And I thought about that, and this has been some years and years back. I thought about that, and I thought about that, and I thought about that, and then Finally, I made a decision. I said, you know what? I'm going to get up and not send my children, but I'm going with them. And I got up that Sunday morning, and I went to Mount Sinai with my children. And I started going, and I started liking it and enjoying it. And the next thing I know, one Sunday morning, I was making it to the altar. The Lord saved my soul. And I can say that before I was saved, I was influenced through my children. But after I was saved, you know how we get gun ho I was ready to run for the Lord. And I started running way back then. And you know what? I'm not running now, but I'm still hobbling. <laughs> but you know what? In Ecclesiastes 9 and 11, it says the race isn't given to the swift, but those that will endure till the end. And that's what I plan on doing. And through that, uh, I have learned endurance. You've heard a lot of stories from these mothers around here. And uh, I tell you, life is rough. It is. But I, I tell you, when you have the Lord, that's all you need. And through all, all through my life, and through all the ups and downs of my life, everybody know, when my children were coming up, they used to talk about the whippings and the things that I used to give them. But I tell you what, I never had one to go to juvenile. Never. I never had to go to juvenile and get any of my children. And I never had to go to jail until they were, one was grown. So I thank God for that. And um, I thank God today that through all the trials and when my son went to jail, I said, I just couldn't believe it. It was, I, I was just so heartbroken, I couldn't believe it. And then and when I went to, the, went to court with him that day and the judge gave him all these years, I said, I just can't believe it. I just, I just don't know what I'm going to do. But then I got out and I cried and I cried and I cried. And then finally something come to me and says, well, you know, at least he's still living. Yeah. At least he still has a chance. Yeah. So, and I thought about that and I kind of got up and shook the dust off and started going on, and then I lost a son in a car wreck. The phone rang early that morning, and I got up and I answered the phone, and, it said, and this lady said, Ma'am, your son has been in a car wreck. And I said, Oh, my Lord, is he hurt? She said, I think he's dead, just like that. 
And I thought that I would lose my mind. I said, I said when one went to, the, went to jail that I didn't know if I could make it, but now I think I w I'm just going to, I just want to die. Lord, just please take my life. But then I made it through that. And I'll never forget, I used to just pick up my Bible and read it, and it was the 23rd Psalm that I read so much. And it was just that first verse, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need to make it. And in that American Standard Bible, it said, because the Lord is your shepherd, you have everything you need. And the Lord brought me through that. And I thank him. But I learned endurance through all my ups and downs in life. I learned how to endure like a good soldier. And just one second. One of the greatest experiences of my life is to see has been that to see my children grow up, some stray but one didn't. And that was my son. And this, what we are doing right now, this is my great experience. Every Sunday, when I see you all's beautiful faces, and when I see Kim say, I'm going to be a part of this church. I'm giving my life to God. That's the greatest experience of my life. I thank God that I had the opportunity to raise my children, and he reversed it and gave me a son that one day would raise me. And he has taught me the word of God. And let me tell you, church, it has not been easy. When I sit back in that seat and I says, hello, <laughs> you know it's hitting me. I just thank God for, I thank God for his life. And I just, I just say that is the, it is just the greatest joy of my life. All of you are the greatest joy of my life and a blessing. And if I could tell a young mother anything today, I would tell her, stay in God's word. Write Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 on the tablet of your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. And he has promised that he will direct your path. And let me tell you, young mothers, he will not go back on his word. You'll have trials and you'll have tribulations. But I promise, he has, he has promised that he would never leave you or never forsake you. And he will keep his promise until the end. You know, a lot of times we have so much knowledge of this and knowledge of that. But you know what? We always need God's wisdom to go along with that knowledge. And then we know when we use our knowledge and God's wisdom, we will not go wrong. And I just say, young mothers, if you do anything, trust the Lord with all your heart. Don't mean you're not going to make no mistakes. Don't mean sometimes we're not going to fall away. But don't never get too far away from him. And he will direct your path. He is faithful. He is loving. And he is kind. And I thank him today. I thank him today again for my pastor. 
And if it's anything that I have been taught through the word at Christ Church, and it's how to love, love people for who they are, and regardless to what they do, love them anyway. May God bless you and keep you. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Who is the? He put me at the end. I don't know why. I had to come behind these seasoned young ladies. How has God influenced my life as a mother? My story is is somewhat different from my sisters here. I uh, became a mother at the age of 30. And, and that was sort of, I you know it was in God's plans because I never really wanted to be married early on. I, I wanted the opportunity to know and learn who I was. I graduated from college. I moved here to Nashville didn't know anybody. Moved here from Alabama. I was coming to Nashville to only stay for a short period of time. And here I, I am. I established my career and I enjoyed life. But my life was not complete. Then I met my friend, my companion, my husband in church. See, when I moved here, one of the first things that I did was found a church. And that was because of my mother. She had instilled in me the basic foundation of keeping God the center of my life. And I can remember that on Sunday mornings as I was trying to find a church, um, I could see my mom standing there in my doorway as I was at home saying, get up, you can get up and do everything else, you gotta get up and go to church. And that's what I did, I would get out and I would drive trying to find a church and I found Lake Providence and that's where I met my husband. My husband and I have two children, Amber and Jalen. So when I became a mother finally, I thought I was ready for the many challenges. Psalms 127.3 says, Lo, children are heritage of the Lord, meaning a gift, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. This scripture has a twofold meaning. First, it speaks of the value of children, and then it tells of their blessing. One thing I've learned is that my true inheritance is not things. It's not my car, my house, or the little money that I have. It is my children. My children are my inheritance. They are in my care for only a season. And as a mother, I feel one of the many roles is to love, train, invest, and shape them in preparation for the future. Let's first talk about my daughter, Amber. That's my angel from heaven. As of today, I don't know. <laughs> this was not one of her better days, but she have her moments. We all have our moments. God has entrusted her life in my hands to love and care for her. However, she has also taught me something. She has taught me patience, self-control, and how to love unconditionally, and the importance of having structure in our lives. And these are the traits that I run my household. And because of that, I know that is what she needs to function. So to this day, I praise God because she does not take any medication. 
And for an autistic child, that is very unusual. And the doc, her pediatrician would always ask me, you must run a very calm and structured household. And that is why it's because of her. You, you won't hear yelling and screaming, arguing, fussing. A, you know, you're not going to hear that in my house. You're going to hear it's very calming and relaxing because it has to be because of her. And I praise God for that. She also, her speech is very limited, but she can say Jesus. And she can say, I love you. And I thank God for that. Now let's talk about my son. As you know, my son Jalen was in an accident recently. And I want you to know, it, it touched my heart because he called me. He called my cell phone. Nothing, taking away nothing from my husband, but it was mama. And when I picked up my cell phone and answered, I saw he was calling me, and I automatically knew something was wrong. And, and when I heard, Mama, I was up on the floor, and I was getting clothes. As I was talking to him, I was getting dressed. And I was trying to be calm and consoling to him and getting dressed all at the same time. My husband was in the, up, in the other room watching TV. And when I, I came out of the bedroom, I was dressed and ready to go before I realized I hadn't told him what was going on. And I needed to let him know I was getting ready to go. My baby was in trouble and mama needed to be there. So he got ready. <laughs> and as we were heading out the door, you know, he's stopping at stop signs, stopping that traffic light. We got to the intersection and the emergency, uh, the ambulance was going down the street. And I told him, I said, you cannot stay at this traffic light. We need to go. <laughs> And he took off, and we were there in a matter of seconds, running the red lights. And um, all I was thinking was that I needed to be there as quickly as possible. I didn't realize how valuable he was to my family until I almost lost him. You see, he is my inheritance. As a mother, to acknowledge, as a mother, I always taught him to acknowledge Jesus as the head of his life, to pray. I've taught him money management and the importance of tithing, as these sisters have already discussed. Even though I sometimes I still have to remind him, he, he does tithe. I've taught him to be a savvy shopper, to look for bargains, and I, I, uh, he always come in and he'll tell me when he bought something and he'd gotten a good deal. That's good money management. But I've also taught him to save and prepare for the future, and, and the basic life skills so he'll know how to function in this real world. I've equipped him with confidence in himself that he can do and become whatever he wants. And to succeed, it is important to have good grades and that he can do all things, not some things, but all things through Christ because he will give him the strength that is needed. This is Philippians 4 and 13. I've also instilled in him as a child that even though he is the youngest, that no matter what, it is his responsibility to care for his sister. Not to care for her, but to make sure that she is cared for. <laughs> and one of the greatest experiences is came from one of, his one of her teachers. Um, 
They go to the same school, and Jalen is a peer tutor, which means he's a helper in, their, in the, her classroom. And this particular day, they went on a field trip and stopped for lunch. And the teacher told me that she was so impressed to see Jalen caring for his sister. He ordered her food, set her up, they sat next to each other, which I'm surprised because Amber doesn't like to be around him. <laughs> so she let, allowed him to set her up. He placed her napkin in front of her so that she wouldn't mess up her clothes. And these are things that he have seen me doing. He, do it, he did all of that. And she said at the end, when they were finished, he made sure her hands and her mouth was clean, that everything was in order. And it was a blessing to me to know that even though I wasn't there, that he did the right thing. My son is not perfect. No, he's not. Is he an angel? Absolutely not. Does he do things that he shouldn't? Absolutely. But I just pray that I have planted the seed in his heart and in his mind to keep Jesus the center of his life. And he would not depart from that. Advice to some of the young mothers. First and foremost, seek God for your readiness to become a mother. You can't care for a child if you can't care for yourself. All mothers are rich when they love their children. Their love is always the beautiful of joys. The second thing is take time to spend with God, to grow in the word and pray. When we pray, our children learn that they are welcome in God's presence, and they become confident in going to him. As praying mothers, we not only let our children come to him, we lead them to him for life. Prayer should be the key to the day and the lock to the night. The next thing is take time for yourself. Keep yourselves healthy mentally and physically in order for you to be the glue to hold your family together as a mother and as a wife. Number four is don't be your child's friend. Many parents make the mistake of wanting to be friends with their children. See. This may provide a temporary bonding, but it will eventually come back to haunt you. They have plenty of friends, but only one mother. They need structure, stability, and discipline. So be their mother. Five, don't ever dishonor your spouse in front of your children. You are a role model for your children and they are quick to pick up on the negative things. So teach them to honor and respect their father, no matter what. Number six is teach the importance of church. Research shows that children who go to church once a week have lower percentage of pregnancies, higher GPAs, dropouts is less, they live longer and are generally better behaved and more adjusted. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Ruth Bell Graham says, If your children have the background of a godly, happy home, and this unshakable faith that the Bible is indeed talks about, the Word of God, they will have a foundation that the forces of hell cannot shake. So the last thing is love is the thing that's most vital to the tender hearts. 
impressible spirit of a child. If children feel love and acceptance from their parents, their view of God's love is strengthened. The world will give them opportunities to doubt. Let me say that one more time. The world will give them opportunities to doubt. But we must give them every reason to believe. As my sister said, you should have love. That's the main thing. Now I want to leave you with this little poem. And it says, it's by Miriam Elderman. God, help me to be honest so my children will learn honesty. Help me to be kind so my children will learn kindness. Help me to be faithful so my children will learn faithfulness. Help me to love so that my children will be loving. So I just want to take this opportunity to wish all of the mothers a happy and blessed Mother's Day. May God bless you and may God keep you.